Today in the studio, we have Sandra Fisher. Sandra is a professional writer, consultant, and the creator of Relationship Reveal. Sandra has a diverse background specializing in communications, people development, and optimizing organizational effectiveness. Today, we'll be talking to Sandra about how to bring your resume to life in an interview. This is the Career Cube, the podcast focused on helping you navigate the signals in your career to keep you growing and moving forward in business and in life. Here's today's host, Dana Redmond. Sandra, welcome. We're happy to have you back. Oh, I'm so excited to be back. Great. Well, let's jump right in. People spend so much time creating a really good resume. Oftentimes, they've paid somebody or they've spent a lot of time and energy making sure that they send it through spell check so they have a really good document. So then they send that off to a company and then they get the call or invited to either a telephone interview or a phone interview. And then they get the question, walk me through your resume. So how can somebody best answer that question? Well, when I think of someone's resume, it's a very one-dimensional piece of who they are, giving a lot of the highlights. And I think in an interview, it's really incumbent on the interviewee to really bring that to life for somebody and make it three-dimensional. And I think also it's one of the places where I know when I coach people about getting prepared for interviews, their eyes start to glaze over, like, I've done all the work, I should be ready, and I know my life. Um, But... It really is, uh, it pays off so much in the long run to be able to uh, bring that to life in a much more colorful and uh, clear way. So I encourage people to really think of themselves as being the CEO of you and that that is a great opportunity to put that marketing hat on and to really um, be able to match up what they have to offer with um, the job and the company um, that they're talking to. And so I think that's probably the really big first place to start in order to be able to market your skills as best you can. Yeah. It's an interesting thought to think about. The paper resume, your electronic copy of your resume, is very one-dimensional. It is a bunch of words in there. And so your job then as you walk in there is to bring that more to life. And I love that thought of creating that 3D. How do you pull out the relevant parts and make some mountains and make some valleys and sort of create something out of that? That's That's a great visual for me, for sure. So when that question is asked, is it really a resume walkthrough. Is that what you think interviewers are looking for? Are they looking for something else in that question? I think they're looking for a place to start, and they want to give you the opportunity to essentially sell yourself. And so a lot of times I I know when I would be in an interview interviewing someone, the last question I always ask is, please, is there anything else left that you want to tell me? I want to know what do they want to tell me about themselves? Mm -hmm. That's kind of Mm -hmm. the first thing that's on my mind. And tell me why I should hire you. And so that overview, that walk me through your resume is a great opportunity for you to pick out those pieces of your experience and your life that you want to bring to life for somebody that help them understand how you fit into this job that they have or into the company that they have. Because oftentimes companies are looking you know, for both the right fit for the job and the company and they want to invest in you. Um, both in the short term and the long term, so they want to make sure it's all going to all going to come together. So, it's incumbent on the interviewee to answer. You know, will you be able to do the job? What skills do you have? Are you qualified? And if there are gaps, how are you going to actually step up to meet those gaps? How do you fit in the team? How will you fit in the company? Why are you the right? Why is this the right place for you? I think that's so interesting because right? that is that they've already at a base level, looked at your resume and understood, you know, on paper, this person looks like they they could do the job. And so now your job, as you mentioned, you are the CEO of you as the product. Mm-hmm. And so you've now got to convince them to essentially, you know, buy you, take you, <laughs> right, be the one to take you home from the store, if you will, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, you know, as I think about it, there are people that have 20 years experience, 30 years experience. How do you summarize that type of, uh, you know, if you're mid-career or, you know, been in industry for a while, how, do, how can somebody summarize that when somebody gets asked that question? Walk me through your resume. Well, I think uh, my, my first reaction was concisely and precisely. <laughs> um, but, you know, longer careers you do, you gather a ton of really amazing experiences and experience. So 
um, I think that's where we go back and it becomes even more essential to pull out that the items that really closely relate to the job you're being considered for. So that's where it's important to do your research on the company, do your research on the job, and then really be able to pull stuff out of your experience so that the interviewer doesn't have to do the work. You're mm -hmm. doing the work for them and you're, you're letting them know really what, what you feel like is the most important part or the, the most important parts of your background for what they're looking for. Right, because it is so important because you do know your life, you know your experiences, and so you know, you'll know your resume, mm -hmm. but calling that out for them, the most important parts to that, that is most relevant for them to know about you is just so important. I know I will think, gosh, that's in my resume. Shouldn't somebody have read that I have that skill? And maybe no, right? I should mm -hmm. I should expect if that's an important part, I need to be the one to call that out in case they did not memorize my resume, <laughs> right. right? You know, <laughs> oh, they're not going to memorize all five people's <laughs> resume they're seeing that day. <laughs> you know, how long, so if you've got an experienced resume, how long should you spend on that question, you would think, in an, in an interview? Well, I think, you know, probably the first maybe 10 minutes, even 15 minutes. And, and more often than not, what's going to happen is, is you're going through and you're, you're talking about something and um, they will dig down with a deeper question. So rather than circle back and say, oh, OK, I have some questions for you about this. I'll ask them later. They'll do it in the moment. Mm, right, right. And so that, that brings up a couple things. You know, it will, it will create an opportunity for deep diving and you'll see where they seem to be interested in your background and want more information. But also, um, it provides an opportunity at different points where you'll want to bring the conversation back to the rest of your resume skills. Mm -hmm. So you can make sure, again, that you've created the highlights for them that fit all the pieces of the job. So in that, how do you decide what are the highlights? What are the things that somebody should think about absolutely being sure they mention during that resume walkthrough? Well, I know some people that are incredibly skilled at really just on the spot being able to pull almost anything from their work history and their life history out of their back pockets. And unfortunately, most people can't do that. It's it's actually something you really have to practice. So, um, and this is where I get the glazing over of the eyes, but is really take some time and almost write a memoir about yourself. You know, starting back when, you know, what was your first job? You know, when you were, you know, 14 and you worked at the ice cream store or you had a lemonade stand or, you know, anything, anything that you did, you had a babysitting business. So you can go back in your work history and just start way back there. And what did that mean to you? So you can ask yourself a series of questions. You know, what am I passionate about? What did I love about this job? What did I learn from something? And those are little tip-offs that can help focus your mm -hmm. writing. Mm -hmm. But really just start all the way back at the beginning, even if you're, you know, like me, where you've had some career time under your belt, going back to some of those key moments at the very beginning of your life, particularly if they're relevant for a job. For example, I love, have always loved working in the international arena. So when I've talked to people about international work, one of the things that I lead with is, um, you know, the story when I was 17. And I went to Europe on a study abroad program. And I lived with the German family. The mom couldn't speak German or couldn't speak English. It would be terrible if she couldn't speak German. <laughs> um, she couldn't speak English. I couldn't speak German. But yet we managed this really amazing uh, nonverbal communications. But I promised myself when I went back, I would be able to speak with her fluently. And that for me, it was this pivotal moment that drove so many aspects of my career later. So in talking about international work, that's a really important piece of information. If I'm interviewing for a job that is completely unrelated, I'm probably going to leave that off the table and talk about something else like, um, you know, how great it was to found my first business when I was in high school. Um, I started a, an errand running business. And what did I learn from that? How did I, you know, how did I process that? And then what did that set me up for later on? So you actually can go that far back. You know, and look at each job that you've had. What were the pivotal moments in that job? What did you learn the most about? What were the skills that you developed? How big was the team? What kind of work did you do? Where did you feel like you excelled and where did you really struggle and how did you overcome those struggles? And how did you progress within that company? How did you operate within that particular culture? So really assess each job and job experience. And sometimes we'll have personal experiences outside of our work experience. 
and people will often forget about those, mm, whether they right. sit on a board, they lead a Girl Scout troop, they coach a Lego League team, or pretty much almost anything that we do in our lives gives us an experience right, of some sort. Right. And how do we bring those in? Um, and that's often are the things that people forget that are actually also really valuable and really meaningful. Right. It's interesting. I love to hear that thought about, you know, likely your uh, study abroad is not on your resume. After you have a few years experience, stuff starts <laughs> falling off, right? You really have to start calling it down. And so kind of on your resume is highlights of careers, but there are some really pivotal pieces to mm-hmm your life that ha- that would make you an excellent candidate for a particular job that maybe don't appear on your resume. So that question of walk me through your resume, you're saying you can talk about stuff that's not even on that resume, <laughs> right? So it's not even just a resume wa- walk through. Absolutely. Yeah, that's so yeah. interesting. And, you know, the other place now with places like LinkedIn that is a professional representation of yourself mm-hmm. as well, and then having a, a resume, um, you know, I know businesses and companies and managers will look at both of those places and see. And so sometimes you've got different information, pulling out different highlighting, trying trying to highlight, I guess, different things depending on where it is. Have you seen much of that, like where there's a big gap between people's LinkedIn versus their resume? And is that a problem or? I think that as long as there's consistency between things that there's not, um, what you don't want to do is appear like you're hiding something. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, in a professional, certain professional settings, you're going to want to highlight certain areas. And uh, in other types of settings, you're going to want to highlight something else. And so as long as you're not giving the appearance of trying to hide something or mislead somebody, then I think it's okay. But you may be missing an opportunity if you don't have certain information in one place. What opportunity are you missing Mm, in being able to educate somebody? So you really want to try to if it's not going to be consistent, have a really clear understanding why you don't want it to be consistent. Right, right. That's interesting. And definitely, I mean, I, the other thing I heard you say is it wasn't just about I was the manager of this team and the team provided technical support for customers who use this product. You, the way you were describing it really was, well, this is what I learned. This is, you know, the mm-hmm. the achievements I had. So it's really, again, not a lot something that would appear on the resume sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. Very, I don't think very often people put like, oh, this is what I learned in that role. They'll put their achievements like they, you know, met some sales goals or, you know, managed to ship some product, but they don't really put in there, this is what I learned. And so I like that, that that can be part of that resume walkthrough. And I think that does bring that to life so much Mm -hmm. more for somebody. Yeah. And you can say, you know, this is what our team was working on. Um, This is how long we worked on it. And this was my role in what we did. And, you know, it was very exciting. I loved it. And at the end, you know, here was kind of the result of our work. So you can tell it in a way that a, a piece of paper simply can't. And also, you know, by really having all of those pieces of information, you don't have to share them all. But you have easy access to them in their in your back pocket. If you really have all of the information at your fingertips and you've gone through it and you've pulled things out for yourself, then when you're sitting in an interview and, and you're sitting across from someone and someone asks you a tough question, you have it practiced, you have it in your back pocket, and you can pull it right out and say, hey, I have a great answer. Here is this story that I have to tell you. Right, right. And I love that. It really is a telling of the story Mm -hmm. versus sort of regurgitating of facts for them. Mm -hmm. Weave that story for them. This has been great, but let's take a quick break. And then when we come back, we will talk about tips for preparing for an interview. Thanks for listening. Be sure to check out the show notes at thecareerq.com where you can also subscribe to the podcast and sign up for our newsletter. Welcome back. We're talking with Sandra Fisher today about how to bring your resume to life in an interview. Sandra, before the break, we had started talking about, you know, what were the important things to mention in your resume? But what are some of the things that you think would really make a candidate stand out? For me, it always was when I was interviewing people, the differentiator was passion and how excited were they for the job, how much passion did they have for the work, and how much did they really want to come work for the company so that it wasn't just you know a job for them. It was right. actually this is a place where they want to come and they want to thrive, and this is the environment that they really believe that they can do that in. Because when people are in that mode, then they're just – 
they're so excited to come to work every day. And they really make a difference in the level of quality and the work that they're doing and also in the team dynamics and the team that they're working in. So I would really encourage people, and this is where being able to tell your story of your resume is important, is that is such a great way to convey passion. And that is, to me, such a critical piece of this. Right, right. And I think the the passion that somebody has for mm-hmm. their job or the passion they have for previous jobs, you know, just mm-hmm. really shows that level of an engagement. Mm-hmm. Um, and being engaged is so key, right? It, it is. It's what makes you want to get up and go to work right. in, the, in the morning right. and, and not sort of dreading it, right? And if mm-hmm. you can make that passion come through, that's key f- for somebody to want to hire you for the job, right, for that job that they're interviewing you for. So what are some tips for preparing for an interview? I think as I started a little bit uh, alluded to earlier, it's really sitting down and spending some time, and this is going to take a little bit of time, to just go through your history and write a little memoir about yourself. And those questions um, that can be really important, you know, what did I love about this? What did I learn there? What did we produce? What did we create? What was it like working on this team? And, um, you know, what did I learn? Where were my growth opportunities? Um, You know, where did I struggle? And what did I learn about my overall career path? How did it steer me? What did I want to change? Mm -hmm. What did I, you know, what did I want to keep doing going forward? How is that influencing what it is that I'm doing today? So to be clear, these aren't always all answers you're going to necessarily give in an interview. Oh, okay. So you don't always want to maybe give them out back verbatim. (laughs) Right. But the more you are familiar with the information in them, the more then you can craft them into a message that helps you go back to that answer that earlier question, why would I hire you for this job? Right. And the more familiar you are, familiar you are with you know, various aspects of your life, and it makes it easier to pull them out of your pocket. And then the other part of that is practice, practice, practice. So I recently was able to be on New Day Northwest, which was very exciting. And I had a friend of mine come over who was a journalist, and we spent a great deal of time actually doing practice interviews. And so she (laughs) crafted about five different interviews ranging from really difficult to, you know, a little bit lighter and fluffier. And actually, that was amazing because it just I could see where I was kind of slipping on my answers Mm, a little bit mm -hmm, where I was mm -hmm. having trouble pulling things out of my hat and you know coming up with something that was more coherent so I felt like by the end of that time that I spent with her that I really felt confident about my answers and being able to craft the message I was seeking in a very concise precise meaningful way so someone else didn't have to think about what did she mean by that so I really recommend whether you are can sit down and practice with a friend or someone in your family, even have your kids ask you interview questions <laughs> or practice in front of a mirror. And, you know, just it helps build your confidence. So when you're confident in that interview, you really can then convey that passion and really align those your skills with the job at hand. Right. How much time would you say somebody should spend? Like just in hours, minutes, days? <laughs> oh, well, you know, that pre-work piece of kind of going through and writing your memoir, mm-hmm. that is never going to stop being useful. So, you know, I think someone could easily spend two to three hours going through that yeah. process. Mm-hmm. And really, if they're giving it the full work over, because um, all of a sudden you're remembering, oh, I did this volunteer stint at such and such a place that lasted six months. And boy, that was really a powerful experience for me. So it just gives you enough time to kind of ruminate on things a bit. So I would say a minimum of two to three hours in that first part and maybe even longer. And sometimes those memoirs, then you can turn around and make it a nice gift for your kids. <laughs> Here, this is about mommy and daddy. Um, Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And then I think in the practice interviews, you know, even a half an hour is going to help you. Mm -hmm. Um, But the longer you can spend on that doing various types of interviews, um, I think is is beneficial. It's never... It's never going to be too much. Right, right. What about for the people that don't enjoy the role play? Is there a way for them to practice interviews without that role play part? Well, I think that they can ask themselves the questions. 
you know, and then either go back to that mirror concept or just really think about them in their head. Right. But I think it really is different, just like, you know, it's different if you're an actor on a stage and you've got an audience or you don't have an audience. (laughs) (laughs) Right, right. So, you know, it does make a difference to have that person in front of you. You mentioned the concept of being concise and precise, right? And I think that with practice, Mm -hmm. that comes. Yes. I'm sure the first time I tell my resume story, it's going to be long and there'll be extra things in there. And then the more I practice that, I can really hone that down in a way that I take out all these sort of extraneous pieces Uh (laughs) that aren't that aren't really the, the pieces I need to highlight. Right. Um, and that way that can go through. So that I think that precise and concise is a key piece to that. In the sort of the, the written world of, you know, books and movies and things like that, they use the term log line in movies. And you literally have uh, about two sentences to sum up your entire like hour and a half film. <laughs> and, you know, if you think of a book jacket cover, you know, you've got right. two or three paragraphs at the most to describe everything in a book. And the hours that are required to actually bring things down to that very concise, precise place, it takes time. And you have to continually work to recraft your message. And so to go back to sort of where we started with the marketing, you really have to factor in that time mm, to create mm-hmm, to create that mm-hmm. marketing message about yourself. What do you want them to know? What do you want them to come away with? And it takes that time investment to really do it. So going back to my question sort of about the – mid-career or senior professional, right? Many Mm -hmm. resumes are two pages, if not more. How much of that should somebody think about and sort of memorize and and write about, write their memoir about? All of it. Okay, all of it. (laughs) I mean, that's, that's, you know, I, that's my personal Mm -hmm. opinion. I don't know if there's really an industry standard around (laughs) that particular metric, but it's your life. And those early experiences are really super meaningful. Now, if you're in a really highly technical job and, you know, maybe what you did back then is not as relevant as it is now because technology is different, that's, again, where you refocus that interview and you say, yeah, you know, here's where I started. You spend two minutes on that part of your career and then you say, okay, but here's where I am today. And here's and, and it, the journey of actually right. how you got there is also really meaningful. Like, why did you stick with it? How did you keep yourself up to date? Yeah. yeah. What do you like about the technology and the work you're doing now versus where you started? And, and what do you think has changed in the industry? And how does that influence what you do now? So I still go back to I think all of it's really important. Right, right. Because your whole experience is what's made you you. Yeah. And that's interesting because as you start to – write a resume, you know, we hear this sort of a two-page limit or, you know, three mm-hmm. maybe. But you do start cutting stuff out after you have a lot of experiences, yep. right? And and what I love about that concept of the memoir piece of it is, again, it might not be something that's on your resume that you would normally put mm-hmm. out there. But if it's a really important part for that particular job or that sort of story you're weaving, it has a place, I guess, you know, in, you, right. if you're thinking of this memoir concept versus just a, oh, hold on, I need to repeat my resume to somebody sort of line for line. Right. Like there's, you know, way back in my um, experience, I was a facilitator of a variety of different training programs. Well, I, I wouldn't necessarily sell that to someone now as I can, oh, I can go out and I can facilitate this program for you. So I've taken that off my resume, but it certainly is an, a really important part of my experience because now I can go forward and I can say, well, I'm an experienced experienced facilitator. Um, these are the programs I've done in the past. And, you know, if you have programs that you want me to come on board and facilitate now, I certainly can do that. I have the experience. I know how to to learn. I know how to, to begin, be able to turn them around and deliver them. So those are things where that part of that memoir piece comes back because it is part of your skill set, but I don't want to tell somebody I can deliver that program now because that that's inaccurate. Right, right. And that may not be where you want to go either. Right, right, right. <laughs> it's exactly. something you can do, but not something you want to do. Right? Yeah, so exactly. That can, that can make a difference. And, you know, you mentioned something along the way about the learning process, you know, especially like if you're in technology, you've had some job transitions, right? You started out in one space, but you're somewhere, you're working in different technology or a different space. And the interesting piece of that is how did you make those transitions and how did you learn along the way, which 
you know, given sort of the speed with which technology changes and jobs change, you know, that's mm-hmm. got to be something most companies are looking for is can this person keep up? Are they willing to stay current in their industry with whatever the changes come? Mm-hmm. I think that's a really important piece. Even, you know, if you look at something that's less technical in terms of like programming and things like that, human resources. Well, H- HR laws change all the time. Right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when you really have to keep up with what's current, what's going on in workplaces, what are the tools and things that support a particular, you know, position. So payroll, compensation, all that kind of stuff. So there's really almost, you know, every industry is going to have something that it's evolving from into something new. And um, so being able to talk about how you manage those changes and innovations and how you see the future. I mean, how do you how do you see going forward? Um, you know, what your vision is, isn't a really important part of your memoir. Right, right. And that's neat. Because thinking about the change that can happen to somebody's just job, you know, a new, if you are in accounting, they could implement a new accounting software mm-hmm. system, right? And so that that piece of being able to learn, it just I think about that salespeople, right? They bring in a new mm-hmm. CRM, right? You know, there are things yeah. that you are constantly or your product changes that you're selling that you're going to have to stay on top of. So that piece of explaining how you could have continued to learn and evolve through that bringing your story to life. Right. And it's it demonstrates a sense of flexibility. And, you know, there's a whole industry around change management right. expertise. Mm-hmm. And so I think um, as change has accelerated in, you know, the last decades, um, almost every person has started to become, you know, a change management expert in and of themselves and how they do it in particular, but then how they are, how they can embrace it in organizations. So are you a change agent? Are you, you know, how do you move those things forward? And I think I think going into the future, that's probably a, a really important topic for companies is, is how do you, how do you embrace that? Right, right. So what are some errors someone can make in an interview? Um, I think one of the the big ones is really not knowing what they're coming into interview for, not knowing anything about the job, the company, you know, why they're really there. And, (laughs) um, you know, it's a lot of times people will, you know, throw out, you know, they want to try a whole bunch of different things, um, which is fine, but at least have a really clear understanding of why you're in the room with me or why you're on the phone with me right. and, and how you fit. So for me, that was always a big one of like, you know, do you do you know why you're here? <laughs> um, and so that that was a big one. And I think also, you know, a really big mistake, and this, this thankfully doesn't happen all that often, but just is really being misleading about something on your mm-hmm. resume. Mm-hmm. And particularly with within communities, it's a small network. And invariably, it just doesn't pay to uh, be misleading about something, whether it's your skill set and and overselling what you can do. So you want to be positive and sell your skills and sell who you are. But overselling something that you can't do, I think, is is probably not a great thing because then it creates a lot of stress and anxiety for you when you get in a job <laughs> and they've hired you to do something and you realize, whoa, I'm yeah. in way over my head. And, you know, how much can you actually stretch? And I think demonstrating just not a lot of passion or, you know, not enough technical knowledge to do the job that's at hand or, you know, clearly they haven't read all the, the requirements in the job description Um you know, when they can't do, you know, their resume doesn't indicate that they can do half of them. But hopefully a lot of that gets screened out before they're actually um, in the room with you. Those are the big ones that I can think of. Can you think of any more? I don't think so. I was my, where my brain then went to next is more around what are some of the mistakes then people make in preparing for interviews? If you take that one step back, what, what are some errors you've seen there, mistakes that can happen in that process? I think just not preparing enough. <laughs> I mean, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. And not, um, you know, being able to get through the interview and talk about it, but really not being able to do that best marketing job mm-hmm. that they possibly can for themselves. You're going to be your biggest advocate in any in any job interview. And so, you know, that's where that preparation comes in. It's just really not preparing enough. Right, right. I mean, they always talk about you just need to be prepared for sort of anything. Right. And being late. Oh, you don't yeah. want to be late. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, this is wonderful. Do you have any last sort of highlights or tips that you want to be sure that um, you know our listeners hear from you? I think it's just really a, it, it's about knowing yourself and knowing your history and being able to communicate that really concisely and precisely and being really able to convey those wonderful, unique, special qualities about yourself. So really everything we've talked about and really take the time to invest in that for yourself. Like a lot of things we get caught up in the day-to-day stress of, you know, paying bills and the overwhelming nature of phone calls and social engagements and social media. And so it can be difficult to take that quiet time and and give that to yourself in order to, to go through this process. But it's really, uh, really, really worth it. And right. I think it pays off in the short term and the long term. Right, right. I love that, right? I think it's so important to make the space for you to prepare for your interviews. Mm -hmm. That way you can do well. Because you know, I'm going to, to quote you, the CEO of you, which is my new, one of my new favorite <laughs> lines on my gift dad. I'm CEO of me t-shirt. Mm -hmm. um, but that's an important role to think about when you are going into that interview is nobody else is there to sell you, but you. So right. you got to, you got to take charge of that and mm -hmm. let the, let the interviewers know who you are. Yeah. And oh, it's yeah. exciting. I mean, you know, I think, even even first-time job searchers, when they look back and often you can say, oh, I haven't really had any jobs of significant importance. And when you really look back, it's like, actually, you've done a lot. You just have to be able to pull it out and convey it in a really positive, exciting way. So even new college graduates, I mean, they've done a lot of stuff and they need to know you know, how to pull those things out and then convey them in an exciting way. And it can really build your confidence when you look back and you think, wow, I've, I actually have done a lot. This has been kind of an exciting journey. And it can give you that lens. So when we talked, you know, about knowing yourself in the, in the first podcast, it really can help see where you've been and give you lots of tools and information to figure out where you're going. So it's a it's a process that benefits lots of different things. Right. And I love that, that you might get just re-energized mm -hmm. by, wow, look at the things I have accomplished or I have done that have been pretty cool. And then that sort of reignites that passion. Mm -hmm. So you can be the CEO of you. Yeah. So sometimes, <laughs> sometimes when you look back, I've heard, you know, I've heard people say, wow, I actually do know something. <laughs> okay. You know, because a lot of times we, you know, where, where we are in our careers, we're still challenging ourselves. So we aren't the expert every single day. There's more that we can do, more that we can learn. And when we can just sort of mentally put ourselves back in a place where we are the expert, um, that can re-energize us and say, oh, okay, I've done this before. And, you know, it can give us that motivation to keep going and trying new things. Great. Sandra, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much for coming in. If our listeners want to um, get more information about you, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you? They can email me at info at relationshipreveal.com. They can also find out information through www.relationshipreveal.com. So that's probably the best way. Great. Well, thank you for coming in today. It's been my pleasure. It's so fun. Thanks for listening to today's episode. Be sure to head on over to thecareerq.com where you can get more information, show notes, and related articles to today's topic. Also, if you like what you're hearing, head on over to iTunes, subscribe to the podcast, and make sure you leave us a rating and a review. We'd love to hear your feedback. Thanks again. The Career Q podcast is produced by Lens Group Media and recorded at Jack Straw Cultural Center in the lovely Seattle, Washington.